Hi, I'm Christy Friesen and I am all gloved up here at the Cool Tool Studios because we are going to play with epoxy clay. Now, I don't know if you've played with this stuff before, but it is amazing. I feel like it's kind of a game changer in my own creative journey. And I feel like you might feel the same because it is a two-part product. When you put it together, you get this moldable dimensional epoxy putty that then you can put things in, connect stuff together, build it up a little bit, and then it dries rock hard. So it's perfect for combining anything other than plastics. There's, they don't really like plastics too much, but it does rocks and stones and crystals and all of those nifty little things, metals, all that. So we're gonna have some fun playing with epoxy clay, and I'm gonna create a little pendant using a wonderful little gemstone, cabochon, we're gonna use a little wire, and we're gonna get some sparkly cubic zirconia to really make it jump out at you. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay, glove up and get ready to play with me. So here's the tools we're gonna to be using for this project. Um, wire cutter and pliers, because we're gonna make a pendant out of this 20 gauge copper wire. I've got some paint brushes around because we may end up using our uh, pan pastel to get some color in the epoxy clay. And then I've got a couple of sculpting tools that are always great to have around. These are my favorites. They're from my product line. They're stainless steel and they work for everything from metal clay to polymer to epoxy. And you'll see how we play with those today. Cutting blade, in case I need to cut something, nobody knows. And I've also got this little fun thing that is just a little Teflon sheet. And it's wonderful because I can work on it and anywhere that the epoxy clay touches, it won't stick because nothing sticks to Teflon. And that way it can dry and be great and peel right off and it's good to go. If you don't have that, number one, well, why not get it? But uh, in the pinch, you can use like a little plastic baggie or even some saran wrap, that type of thing um, to, to fill in and nothing will stick to that as well. So it's good. Then we have our CZs. These are some fun little champagne colors in both six millimeter and three millimeter. And we chose those here. The Cool Tools team helped me thick, pick the perfect match of stone and stone because this is a little bronzite and you should see how this thing glows. It's like made up of all kinds of little bits of shiny things. So it's sort of like Las Vegas meets Jurassic Park. It's way cool. And then these will all combine together to make our final wonderful pendant. Now, last but not least, epoxy clay. Epoxy clay is our two-part putty. We're gonna mix it together and use it to make our project, but it comes in black. That's what I'm using today, but also it comes in white and it comes in a variety of colors and you can even add more color to it in the form of powders to make even different colors if you want. So it's fabulous stuff. And then finally, I have just a little teeny piece of polymer clay and I'm gonna use this as a crystal pickup tool. So if you've got like a crystal katana or you've got one of the pickup pencils or even a toothpick with a bit of beeswax on the end, that works fine. But if not, polymer clay will do it. Okay, are you ready? Let's get creating with epoxy clay. All right, so I'm gonna slip my stone onto my little Teflon sheet and we're gonna mix our epoxy clay. You want two equal amounts of the epoxy clay, part A and part B. The chemical reaction starts when the two parts are mixed together. I'm just gonna take a little something and scoop a bit out, and I'm totally eyeballing it. Um, I don't need to measure it or weigh it, because I'm pretty good at doing this with eyeball, but if you feel more comfortable in weighing it, absolutely. I'm pulling just a little bit out, making a little ball out of it, and then I'm gonna use my wet wipe to clean my tool. That way I'm not transferring part A or part B into part A, because that's not fun. But I am gonna scoop out a little bit more, and remember you've got some of that on your fingers, so it's better to get a little less and add to it than have to put some back. So I need just a little bit more to make them kind of two equal parts. So I'll do this first, and then we'll mix it up. Let's see, what do you think? That looks pretty darn close, wouldn't you say? All right, let's clean this off again. And have that wet wipe handy, because you do not want to leave it on your tools. If you spent money on an expensive tool, you don't want it to be covered with a nice cement product later on. Okay, so a mixing two-part epoxy is very easy. You're just going to push it back and forth like you're kneading bread. 
you have at least an hour to an hour and a half work time with this particular brand of epoxy clay. There's a lot of epoxy clays out there. This is probably one of my absolute favorite brands. There's a lot of work time. It's nice and sticky, which is a big plus in your, poly in your epoxy clay. And um, it is really firm and holds detail really well. If you see any streaks as you mix it, then you're not done yet. Keep on going until all the streaks are gone. Now you'll notice that I am mixing this with gloves. And the reason is, this is a chemical. It's in the resin and epoxy family, of course, so it can absorb through your skin and over repeated usage, usage you will get more and more sensitive to it. And some people have a problem with that. They'll get a reaction to that. And you don't want to do that. You want to minimize your chemical connection. So I'm just using my gloves for that hard part. But now I'm going to take my gloves off because what's next requires a little bit more fine motor skill. But I'm still going to keep that wet wipe at the ready so that I can use it anytime I get some on my fingertips. So let's just play. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a hanger for this. And I like just trying to bend the wire by itself, not using tools, because you get a much nicer, more artistic bend. So I took a few inches here and I've just made a nice little loop. Look at how pretty that loop is. If you tried to get your tools in there, it would get all wonky. So just let it bend by itself. And now I'm using my fingers to just kind of arch it. I want to sort of mimic the shape that I'm going to be putting it on. What do you think? So that's going to be a loop sticking off the top and grabbing onto the side of the stone. So now it's just sort of playing with it and adjusting it to make it fit on our stone better. Let's trim off the excess. We don't need a whole lot there. I'm going to trim this and I'm going to try to trim this to about the same length. And it doesn't have to be 100% because those ends are going to be trapped inside of our epoxy clay, which will be just groovy. All right, let's take a look. All right, I think that's pretty good. I just want to play with this a bit so that they both have about the same height on the stone. All right, so I think this is pretty nice. So you see our loop, we have a little space here so we can see the top of that cabochon shape and we've got little blumplets right there which is the technical term for those things. I'm gonna take my clay now and I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna pull off a little ball of clay, epoxy clay, and a second one. And you see it's sticky it's, it's getting on my fingers, you can kind of see that. So I'm gonna to wanna to keep wiping them, but it's not like so sticky. And I want this to be about the same size. So there we go. All right, wiping, wiping, wiping. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these epoxy clay blobs onto the side right about here. I'll move my wire and put those right where I want that wire to kind of attach. Now you might be going, well, that's an awful lot of epoxy clay. What are you doing? Or you might actually use a different voice than that. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm putting that on the side so that I can then cover it with crystals too and make this not just a Princess Leia look, but something decorative as well. So I'm gonna pick up my wire, place it back in, and I'm looking at how much space I have there at the top, making sure that's artistically pleasing. And I'm just shoving it down in, keeping it straight, and then squeezing it back into place, watching that shape, keeping that shape purdy. Don't worry about the little creases. I have a plan. All right, so this is what it should look like. We've got our cab, we've got our little hanger, my fingers are clean, and now we're gonna start decorating that whole thing with our CZ. I'm using my little clay, and I'm gonna pick up my CZ and stick it right on the top and press it in. Look how shiny. Now, I am not going for symmetry. I'm going for balance, but not perfect symmetry. If I put two here, I'm not gonna put two on the other side. And the reason I do this is I already know myself. I'm not a symmetrical person. I have trouble making things be straight lines or perfect symmetry. So my strength comes with asymmetrical balance. Because when you put something in and you don't get the symmetry perfect, it is so obvious that it's not right. So if you're good at that, you go nuts. But if you're not, then what you wanna do is always balance things off. If you have a big clump here, then a smaller clump here, just keep on playing that balance game. And you'll notice that all I'm doing is pressing them into the epoxy clay and pushing them in so that they will stick. Let's get that going right here. Fun, fun, fun. This is kind of zen. It's almost like meditation. I mean, you're just kind of watching the shine and deciding where it needs to go and 
maybe having a little beverage to make you happy and a little music on in the background. And before you know it, you've made an amazing masterpiece. So let's pick all these up with my stones. And you want to press them in enough so that you can feel that grab. Doesn't that look good so far? Let's get a few more on this other side. Come back. That one likes to travel, so we'll put that one right here. Now you can leave some of that epoxy clay showing. It's a decorative element, doesn't have to be completely full. So what I'm gonna do is since I have a little cluster here, I'm gonna balance it off by putting another little clump right over here. So I put my ball of epoxy clay, pressed it in the surface. Let's get that other big CZ over here. And look at that. So see, now I've got two over here, and I still have two over here, just in a little different arrangement. If I want, I can make a couple more small ones floating off. That's the cool thing about this. I can put this epoxy clay right in the center of my stone, and this will stick on there permanently. You don't have to drill in there and set a stone. You don't have to use gloppity glue that will look terrible. This epoxy clay is both glue and decorative element. Now just look at how cool does that look. I feel like that's a nice balanced one, and if I wanted to keep on coming down, putting more CZs all over the place, I could, but I'm really liking that. So now the last little trick I can do is use my epoxy, I'm sorry, my um, wonderful pan pastel and use a little bit of brown on the surface of that black epoxy clay, because maybe I want it to be brown to match my stone, and this is a great way to do it. I'm not. I don't have any problem with the black. I think that looks good, but the brown just makes it look like you have a choice. You chose that color, and it will stick right to the surface of the epoxy clay. Once the epoxy clay is cured completely and it is an air-dry cure, it will just have that nice little layer of brown on the surface instead of black. Now, I'm getting a little bit of the powder on the CZ. Don't worry. That comes right off after it's all done. I'll take a little wet wipe or some Windex or something to it, and it'll just pop right again. So there we go. Now, the only thing you have to do is just wait. It takes about 24 hours for a air dry, completely rock hard. Then you'll peel it off your happy little Teflon sheet, and you will be ready to put a jump ring on, throw it through a little copper chain, and go impress all of your friends. Cool, right? So that's exciting, isn't it? Does that not open up ideas in your head? Look at how wonderful using epoxy clay with gemstones, with crystal, with CD, look at how wonderful that is. How easy it was to just insert that wire bale. We didn't have to drill anything, no messy glue, fantastic. So get your epoxy clay on, start experimenting. I bet you have stuff all around the house that you can already play with. And if not, I know where you can get some really fun stuff right here at Cool Tools. Okay, have fun, make that epoxy clay. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.